going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In this module, the first module of our intermediate and advanced fundamentals course, we are going to be covering enums with Swift, short for enumerations. So let's go over a quick definition. And side note, you guys should create a blank playground for this if you haven't already, so that we can start playing around with this stuff. So let's jump right into it, guys. What is an enumeration? So an enumeration defines a common type for a group of related values and enables you to work with those values in a type safe way within your code. They also follow value-based semantics, so they're pretty similar to structs as we'll see here in a little bit. And the way I like to think of enums, and we'll see this as we go through some examples, is that whenever you have something that requires custom types or options, an enumeration is the perfect structure to use. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the code and get started with an example, guys. So I'm gonna create some marks here, and these are gonna just denote the different types of enums we're gonna be working with. So we're gonna call this standard enum. So let's go ahead and go over the syntax, guys. You start this off by typing out the word enum, and then you name it, very similar to a struct, right? So we're gonna call this one color scheme. And then you just open up some brackets. So we have an enumeration here and it's called color scheme. So you guys might be able to guess where we're going with this, right? Imagine you have a color scheme for your application. It could be light mode, dark mode. It could be a custom color scheme. Notice that the keyword there is different modes, right? We have different types of color schemes, right? Which is exactly what we noted up here. So I would like to use an enumeration for that. So let's go over what we can, uh, how to accomplish that. With enums, you create different cases. So we could say we could have a case for light mode, we could have a case for dark mode, and we could also have a case for a custom color scheme. Maybe the user creates that, right? So let's go ahead and break this down really quickly. We have our enumeration and it's called color scheme and we have a bunch of different cases or types that we could use for the color scheme in our application. It could switch between light, dark, and custom. So these are all of the related values that are contained within this color scheme structure, guys. All right, guys, so let's go over how we can actually implement this or utilize this enum now. So let's go ahead and create a variable here, and let's call it scheme. And we are going to cast it as a color scheme like this. And then we're gonna say equals and a dot, and pay attention to this, right? In our autocomplete window, guys, you guys are gonna see all of the different cases we have associated with our enum. So this is really cool, right? This is how I set the value of my enumeration. So I can go ahead and just set it to light for now, right? So now I have this scheme property, it's of this type, and it's equal to like light mode right now, right? Okay, so how would I actually implement that or use that inside of an application? Well, let's say I'm trying to figure out the background color of my app when uh, you know a different scheme is enabled, right? And the user can change this scheme. Let's imagine they changed it to dark, right? So this is how we would change that. We would just now say scheme equals dot dark and Swift is smart enough to recognize that this scheme property is of this type. So now we just have to go here and say dot dark. We don't have to cast it anymore, which is super, super cool right? And then you might implement the logic something like this. You might say if scheme equals dot dark print black background color. And then you could say else if scheme equals dot light print white background color. And then you could maybe say else print custom background color. Right? So this gives you guys an idea of how you could actually utilize your enum using conditional or control flow, uh, conditional statements or control flow rather, right? Like we can check to see if the if this scheme is equal to a particular enumeration case or type, and then we can do something if that's the case, right? So this isn't the most efficient way of doing this, guys. A much better implementation would be to use a switch statement. So we could go ahead and just do a switch on the scheme, and Swift has this really awesome autocomplete feature. If you select that option with the curly bracket, guess what? It automatically switches through all of the different potential enum cases that you could have, guys. And then here, you know, we could just grab this stuff, do that, do that, do that. So we can already see how enums can be super powerful, right? So we can create this property, set it equal to this type, and then we can do a switch through on all of the different cases or check individual cases. And all of that is really, really powerful for us when we're trying to implement different types of functionality in our app, right? 
And guys, this is also really scalable, right? You, you'll notice that if I go and add a case, maybe like system, like you let the system define the color scheme, it's gonna throw an error in my switch statement so that I know I have to add logic there. This is sort of the fallback of this, of this methodology. If you just do a bunch of if, else, if statements, you might not know that you're gonna run into this case. And you would hit this else statement and it, it, that could be for custom or system. And then, you know, it would give you a custom background color when you might want the system background color, right? So we literally just got to go here and add that case by clicking that button and say, print system background color. If we just run the code here and we bring up our console, we will see that it says black background color, right? It says it twice because it's running through the if statement and the switch statement. And guys, if I were to just go ahead and change this to light and run the code again, you guys would notice that it will say white background color. And this is just hanging around from the previous run. It doesn't like overwrite the stuff. So this is working as expected. And that really just goes to give you guys a good introduction as to how enums work and how they can be used. So let's go ahead and keep going with different types of enums we can use and some of their different capabilities, guys. Just a quick break from the tutorial, guys. If you want access to the full intermediate and advanced fundamentals with Swift course, head over to the website at stephancodes.com. The link is in the description. And in the courses section, you guys can scroll down to find the fundamentals courses and you will see the full pro version of this course here, guys. So we cover a bunch of additional topics and that includes protocols, generics, classes, the difference between classes and structs, memory management with retain cycles and all of that stuff, extensions, and pretty much everything that covers all of the intermediate and advanced stuff with Swift. So make sure you guys check that out to get your programming skills as an iOS developer to the next level. So let's go ahead and get back to the tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark here for another section, guys, and we're gonna call this enum raw values. And something that's cool about enumerations and really useful actually is that each individual case can have an associated raw value. And we're gonna see what I mean by that in just a second. Let's go ahead and create an enumeration for the days of the week, guys. And we're gonna start this off a little different. We are gonna cast this as a string. And then we're just gonna go through all the different cases of the week. So each weekday is gonna have its own case. Case Thursday, case Friday, case Saturday. Man, I cannot type. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and imagine that we wanted to display the current day of the week to the user in like a navigation title or something like that. Hey, like Monday the 23rd or whatever it may be. We could go ahead and just say let today equal weekday dot Monday. So this is just another way of creating a enum value, guys. You don't have to cast it right away. You could just say weekday or the name of the enum dot whatever case you want. And today is actually Friday, so let me change that. And let's go ahead and just add a print statement here. Let's say print debug today is, and just go ahead and say today for now. And let's go ahead and print that out and see what we get. So you guys will notice that it gives me back Friday. And that is because this is a string enum type. So when I say Friday like this, guys, it actually just treats that as a string and will give me back a string corresponding to exactly how I typed it out. If I had said like capital F Friday and done this, oops, we got to make that a capital F too. You guys will notice that it would just be that exact raw value of how I typed it out. So you typically keep enum cases lowercase just as a syntax thing. So make sure you're not really capitalizing enum cases unless you have a really good reason to do so. Um, but anyway, guys, this is reading each uh, case as a string with exactly how we typed it out. Something that's interesting is we can assign our own custom raw values to this. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and give this like a raw value like this, th, f, S A and S U. And you guys will notice that if I go ahead and run that, it'll still say Friday, right? Which is interesting. Uh, that's because this is the exact like case value. But if I were to say today dot raw value, you guys would notice that if I run that, it's going to say today is F, 
Or if I change this to Saturday, which is tomorrow, it's gonna say today is SA. So I can assign an individual or unique raw value to each one of my enum cases. And this has its own use case and utility as well. And you guys could use this however you see fit in applications where you might need your enum cases to have raw values. In this case, it's a string. And guys, we can also do this with integer types. And those are the two most common types of enums you'll see, strings and integers. So let's go ahead and create another enum and we'll call this maybe like API status code. And we'll make this an integer type enum. So we're gonna use this enumeration here, guys, to sort of represent what a status code might come back as from an API request. So you could imagine we might get back a 400 error, a 500 error, or something like a 200 success code, right? So let's go ahead and map that out. We'll create a success case. We'll create like an unauthorized error. We'll create a not found error, and we'll also create like a server error. So this is actually really common in apps that involve any kind of networking or API requests, guys. If you're getting data from a backend, you're always gonna have some type of custom error enum that's gonna help you figure out what's going on when you are making those requests. If things are happening as expected with success cases or the potential error cases that you might have, right? So let's go ahead and see how we might actually use this. We can say let status code the API status code, and we could say equals dot server error. And let's just go ahead and say print uh, status code from API request is, and we could just go ahead and interpolate our status code right there. And guys, let's go ahead and run this. And we can see, let's see, that my status code from my API request is server error. So even though this is an integer type enum, when I am adding the status code, it's just giving me back exactly that enum case as it's typed. So as we saw before, guys, we could access the raw value associated with the enum, and in this case, it will be an integer value. Let's see what that gives us back. In this case, it's gonna be three. And that's because when you create an integer enum, guys, Swift automatically assigns the first case a value of zero unless otherwise noted and then increments each corresponding case or each subsequent case rather by one. So that's how this went zero, one, two, three. If I were to make this like five, this would be five, six, seven, eight. Let's go ahead and test that out. But the important thing to note here is that we can give each enum case its own integer value. So you might do that by saying, hey, a status of success is gonna be 200, authorized, unauthorized might be 401, not found might be 404, server error might be 500, right? These are like actual like HTTP response status codes that you might see in a real life application. And then you guys could get some sort of descriptive error message telling you what went wrong with your API request with this sort of setup using this enum here, right? You could take this a step further, do a switch on your status code, and you could say, hey, if success, print, do something, with data and then here you could say like print this 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 right and you could say like uh, a unique print statement for each one um api request is unauthorized with status code blah 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 i think you guys get the point right and if i were to change my status code here to success and run my switch statement or run my code, it's gonna say do something with the data that you got back from the API call, right? So that gives you guys some more insight into how powerful enums are and some of the additional functionality we get with them by being able to assign raw values of specific value types to them, right? And we notice that this follows the value-based semantics we talked about here in our definition, where we can make enums have actual value types like strings or integers, right? Which is super, super cool and super, super useful as well. And guys, to get more practice with this stuff, I'm gonna point you in the direction that you need to go at the end of this video um, to get more practice with enums. Pretty much any one of the pro courses we have on this, on this site, any one of those apps is gonna use enums extensively. And if you guys want a little bit more of an introduction to them, we have some stuff in the Swift UI Bootcamp, which I'll show you later on as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and keep going. There is other cool stuff we can do with enums, and I wanna make sure that we cover everything in this video so that you guys have all of the tools that you need. So let's go ahead and make another mark, guys. 
we're going to call this associated values and computed properties. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and make an enum here for something like an order status. So this is something that you might see in like an e-commerce app. You might use an enum to keep track of the status of an order, right? You might say an order is processed. You could say it's shipped or you could say it's delivered, right? And let's imagine that you want to display some sort of message to the user uh, based on the status of their order, right? So what we can do on enums is we can create computed properties. So I could say status message, which is a string, and you could do a switch on the self, which in this case refers to the enum, right? Anytime you use self, it just refers to the structure that you're contained within. In this case, we're contained within an enum. It's called order status, and we have these three cases. So when I do a switch on the self, it's gonna add all of those enum cases for me. And then, guys, I could simply paste some stuff in here. And this is like a message you would send to the user in like an email, right? Hey, your order's been processed. Hey, return <clears throat> your order has shipped. Ooh, and I spelled delivered wrong like an idiot. So let's update that. Return your order has been delivered. Sweet, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can use this status message. And guys, keep in mind that this is a property of the enum. And guys, something else that's interesting or important to note is that we can't create static properties on enums, right? This is a computed property, but I can't just create like a property called like var name equals order. Or like, yeah, you can, enums must not contain stored properties. You're not allowed to do that. You are, how, however, allowed to add computed properties or functions, right? So we can add another function here or another computed property, whatever you guys want to do as part of your enum. You can do that very similar to what we saw with struct. So really quickly, guys, let's finish this one up and see how we might use this. We could say var status, order status equals dot processed. And then let's imagine we want to send that message to the user. We could say print uh, status dot status message. And you could execute some sort of function to email this to the user and say, hey, your order has been processed. And then guys, if we said status equals dot shipped, we could then say print status dot status message and run this again. And guess what? it's gonna say your order has shipped. So let's break that down really quickly. So this status message is computed based on the particular enum case that it corresponds to, right? So in this case, the status was processed. So when we say print status dot status message, it goes to the uh, enum case that it's currently at, which is processed and gives us back this value. And then we updated it to shipped and then we uh, tried to access that status message again to print it out. And then it's gonna go into this enum and it's gonna say, hey, what's the current enum case? It's shipped, okay, status message. It's gonna go and find the shipped case and say your order has shipped. And you guys might be smart enough to guess that if I said status equals dot delivered and said print status dot status message, guess what? What do you think it's gonna say? Your order has been delivered, right? So this is another super powerful tool here as well, guys, that we can use as part of enumerations we can uh, have computed properties associated with them to help us to get some sort of data back that is unique to a particular case, right? So these are super, super powerful data structures in Swift, guys. I use them all the time and it helps keep your code super clean and organized. So uh, one more really cool thing is that enums can also have associated values, guys. So what exactly does that mean? Well, I'm gonna go to this shipped case here and I'm gonna just add a string and let's take a look at what this does so this is going to say that hey you have to pass in a value that is a string to this enum case anytime you set it to that right so you guys are going to notice we get an error here and it's going to say hey this expects an argument type string and this could represent like some sort of shipping id or shipping number tracking number that you would give a user once you have shipped their order right like anytime you get an order that's been shipped, you typically get the tracking number in the email 
uh, that you get sent to you so that you can track your order. So now we can do that, right? We can say NSUUID dot UUID string. And this is just gonna generate like a random unique identifier. And guys, we could then use that inside of like something like our status message. So um, NSUUID, I think I might have to import foundation up at the top. to recognize that class or struct, whatever it is. Yep, okay. So I know this might be a little confusing right now, but let's go ahead and keep going with this example and I promise it's all gonna come together. So if I go here guys and say, let shipping or tracking ID, right? Then I could go into the rest of my message and say your tracking number is tracking ID. And let's go ahead and run this again and see what happens. So you guys will notice that your order has shipped and then check this out, your tracking number is, and it gives me back that uniquely identified uh, like string ID that I created, right? Which is super, super cool. So enum cases can have, like I said before guys, associated values. So how you work with that is pretty much what we see here. Anytime I set the enum case to shipped, I have to provide it with a value. And anytime I'm reading the case, right? Like from a switch statement like this, I have access to the value that it was provided with here. So this is a little bit more advanced, but like I said, I definitely wanted to show you guys all of this stuff just to give you a full like uh, encompassing of what enums are and what they can do. And something that's important to note about this here guys is that if you provide associated values to an enum, you can no longer stay, like um, make it a value type, like an integer or a string. Um, if you try to build your code here, or like let's run this maybe, enum with raw type cannot have cases with arguments. You see that there, right? If you declare an integer or a string type enum, it has to just be straight up cases. You cannot have these associated values, but these become extremely useful when you wanna do things like this, right? Anytime I update my order status to shipped, I have to provide it with a tracking ID. And then when I want to read that case or do something with it, I can then access that tracking ID. And you guys can also name these properties here. Like I could have said tracking ID, which is a string. And guys, that makes it a little bit more descriptive. So let's go ahead and just rewrite this line of code. I could say status equals dot shipped. And then you guys are going to notice it asks me for a tracking ID where I could say NSUUID dot UUID string. So you can name the properties and you can also have multiple properties if you want guys. Like you could have tracking ID and like uh, shipping time in days or something, which is like an integer, right? And then once again, if I go here and say dot shipped, I could say, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five and shipping time in days is an integer is five. And then you could go up here and guess what? You could say let shipping time, you can call that property whatever you want. It will arrive in shipping time days, right? And if we run the code, you guys will see that message show up there with the associated value data that we passed in. So that's just a really cool example of how you can use associated values with enum cases and get extra data out of those cases, guys. Super, super useful. But before we go forward with our last example, I wanna show you guys a real life example of how enums might get used in a real life mobile application so that you guys get an idea of how this stuff actually gets used in the real world and it's not just a bunch of code on a screen to you right now. So I have this Instagram clone that I've built here, guys, and this is available on the website if you guys wanna check this out at stephancodes.com. So if you head to the website, you just go to the pro courses section and this is the Instagram clone that we have built here. Super awesome course, man. And this is the notifications feature that's part of that course. So I wanna show you guys the code for this. So pay attention to this. It says like Yuki liked one of your posts. And then we have a different notification type. Yuki started following you, liked one of your posts, liked one of your posts, started following you, right? Commented on one of your posts. So you guys notice here that we have a bunch of different notification types. So that's a trigger something in your coder brain that, hey, I would wanna use an enum there, right? Because if you look at the description at the top again, whenever you have something that requires custom types or options like we just described, we have different types of notifications, I like to use an enum. So let me, guys, let me show you guys the actual code for that. 
So we have this structure called notification type. We have likes, comments, and follows. And then we have this computed property like we saw in the tutorial that we just did uh, for this notification message. So when we have a like, we say, hey, so-and-so, we get the username from a different place, uh, liked one of your posts, right? And then this guy is so-and-so commented on one of your posts, and this guy is so-and-so started following you. So when I fetch all of these notifications, guys, I process the type, and notice it's an integer type, so I just store it as a number in the back end. That's something that's covered more in detail in the course. And when I fetch all this stuff, if it's a like type, then this is how I display that notification message. Notice this stuff matches up exactly, right? Started following you. Or the one at the bottom commented on one of your posts, right? So that's just an example of how you might use enumerations in an actual application, guys. And if you look at the notification data structure, this is what a notification actually looks like programmatically in the application. We have this type property, and it's just that enum property right there. So anytime I want to access stuff about that notification, like if I go to the view and I go to notification cell, here we can see that I use the notification type dot notification message. And before that comes the username and then comes the timestamp. So really quickly, just to see all of that full circle, this is the code in Swift UI for that notification cell, guys. We see the user.username plus notification.type.notification message liked one of your posts, and then we add the timestamp for that as well. So that's a really cool example of how enums get used in apps. And if you guys want to take that Instagram Pro course, make sure you go ahead and check that out on the website at stephancodes.com. But let me just go ahead and show you guys one more really cool example of how we can use enums, guys. So there are some really cool protocols that we can conform to with enums, and that's the last example I wanna show you here. So let's go ahead and create an enum for colors, and let's conform to this case iterable protocol and see what this does. So we see it's a type that provides a collection of all of its values. So if I go here and I just say like case red, case green, case blue, case yellow, or something like that, right? What if I wanted to like loop through all of these things and either print them all out or create like a, a rectangle that had each one of these individual colors, right? Something like that. Well, because I conform to this case iterable protocol, here it allows me to treat all of these enum cases as a collection or like an array type, right? So I could say, like, check this out. We could say let all colors and we could say color and we say dot all cases, right? So we get access to this all cases property because we conform to this guy here. You guys would notice if I deleted that, this would throw an error. It has no member all cases. But if I conform to that protocol, and we are gonna be covering protocols in the next video, guys, so get excited for that. Check this out. I would actually be able to loop through all of those cases, and I could just say print color is color. Run that bad boy. And we get red, green, blue, and yellow, man. So that's super, super cool. This is another really, really useful uh, technique that you use with enums and Swift guys, particularly when you're creating like a list of things that are associated with an enum, right? And we'll get more practice with that in the Swift UI bootcamp as well. So make sure you guys check that out too. We have this Swift UI bootcamp that really goes over the basics of how to use enums with Swift UI. Uh, I'm not sticking that in this course, guys. We're really sticking to like fundamentals here. And if you guys want more practice with this stuff, like I said, check out the pro courses or the Swift UI bootcamp. A lot of uh, really good ways to get practice with this stuff and see how it's actually used in building mobile applications as we saw with the Instagram app there. And that is gonna wrap it up for this enums tutorial, guys. In the next one, we are gonna be covering protocols with Swift. So get excited for that. We will see you there. Peace.